Hello everyone and welcome back. We have restarted our uh, the live LinkedIn show. Hello America's What's Cooking here on LinkedIn live every Thursday at 2 p.m. Hope you all enjoyed your summer break. For those who are joining us for the first time, please feel free to give us shout outs and uh, ask any questions from my guest today. For those who have been following us, you know the drill and thank you so much for your support. My name is Ksenia Pola. I'm the Regional Director for Eco North America. And today my guest is David Ruddle from Explory. Welcome, David. Hello, hello, how are you doing today? I am fine. And we've just had this whole conversation about the heat in, in the East Coast versus the West Coast. It's lovely and sunny here in California. And I hear it's a nice and humid there on the East Coast, right? Yeah, surprising that it's humid in early September. No, uh, but yeah, it's, it's quite sticky out here. Uh, but, but hopefully it'll cool down soon. And um, it was so great to meet you in person, and I'm so excited to share a, a little bit more about you and, and explore with our audience. We had the opportunity to meet in person at the ASC conference uh, just uh, a few uh, short weeks back. Hope you enjoyed the conference. Yeah, that, that was actually my first uh, ASAE. Um had been uh, recommended and told to attend it uh, by so many people. It's rare when that happens and you actually go and it exceeds your expectations. Um, but the energy was there, the, you know, great uh, sessions, uh, a great trade show and uh, yeah, great conversation with you. Great, so great to see. And I see one of our um, listeners and followers today in the audience is also Paul uh, Griffin from, from Mauricier, uh, another lovely eco member who uh, I met with at ASC in Nashville as well. Thank you so much, De uh, Paul, for joining us. And thank you for giving a shout out to um, David as well as thank you for um, giving the shout out, Glenn, to David. Uh, before we get started, just a little bit about you, David, and Explory. Yeah, so I guess let me start with Explory. Um, you know, the, the short version, we are a, a research agency focusing in customer or attendee experience data. Uh, that's the collection and analysis of it. And it's very, very focused and tailored to the event industry itself. Um, <clears throat> so we combine a, an extremely powerful and intuitive survey automation distribution uh, tool uh, along with a feedback analysis platform uh, to provide some some really compelling insight into event performance, membership engagement and, and things on that front. Uh, I guess personally, uh, I've been in the uh, events industry for about a decade now, starting uh, organizing a lot of international uh, industrial oil and gas off highway events in the Middle East and Southeast Asia. Uh, then worked my way into uh, to event data and event technology and virtual events, and it, it found my way here at Explory. Um, and I'm really, really excited about what we're doing. Um, but yeah, that's just a, a little bit. I could talk uh, all day, so I better take a break and hand it back over to you. Absolutely, and thank you. And, and you see, we have a very strong fan base for our Hello America's live chats. Glenn is seeing, saying he, he really loves to see the series coming back and hopes many of uh, our listeners uh, and audience will be joining us at the Congress in Krakow, uh, where our theme is Together We Can. And we will also have a se session on data-driven um, importance of data-driven legacies from audience engagements, uh, which is hosted by Explory. So we'll be hearing from one of your colleagues, Sophie Holt, uh, on that topic. Without further ado, you did um, already touch a little bit on it. Eco also partnered with Explory on, on several yes. projects. Um, you don't have to go in depth. If you could just put this yeah. a little bit into perspective, what we've done together. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty cool to give you an idea of the, the scope scale, the range of, of what we can do. We've partnered together on a virtual event to provide some really deep diving insight into that. Uh, we were uh, worked alongside you for the, the annual Congress in Cartagena uh, last October. Uh, so we can you know obviously provide insight on an event to event basis, uh, be it virtual, hybrid, in person. 
But then some of the ones that get me most excited and my favorite projects with you guys were the uh, more the, the membership engagement and the COVID bounce back kind of industry um, reporting that we did just uh, shedding a lot of insight just into shifting expectations and needs from associations and members. Um, so again, a lot of, we've done a lot of projects with you guys. I'm sure there's more. That's just what we've done in the past, past uh, what, about a year? Um, Excellent. Yes. Uh, and, and we'll dive into straight away, but I do want to also acknowledge the shout out from our CEO saying hello, Ica community, but more importantly, he's saying thank you, David, for sharing your thoughts. So thank you, Sentinel, for hopping on. I know it's getting evening in, in Europe, but we really appreciate you being on our live chats. And you already showed some passion about data. Data seems to be one of the buzzwords uh, in this new <clears throat> climate, in this new business environment. It helps us really develop some strategic planning, some forward thinking, how can we adapt, adjust. But before we even start uh, collecting data, what are some of the prerequisites and criteria we should think about? Oh my gosh, that's a it's a great question. It, it's probably the most important part of the process uh, before you begin collecting the data. Um, there's there's so much that be, can be collected and analyzed. Probably too much uh, right now. You know, you don't need to collect and, and analyze everything. Uh, that's why it's really important, I think, for event organizers to uh, to understand what their objectives are before the event. You know, internally, do you have you know exhibitor or attendee retention you know goals or show NPS goals or uh, for your exhibitors and your attendees, you probably have different, you know, sentimental and behavioral objectives. You know, is it a, a thought leadership initiative? Uh, do you want people to leave thinking a certain way or, or do you want them to exhibit different behaviors at your event? Uh, if it's a trade show, are you looking to measure how many booths they visit or a conference, how many sessions they attend? Uh, but once you've identified the things that you do want to measure, uh, lay them out by priority uh, of what's most important. Um, and that'll enable you to start to kind of track uh, and, and quantify uh, the event experience itself. Um, and, and once you've, you've, you've established these things that you do want to track, uh, you need to create some uh, core KPIs. Uh, again, that's just going to help quantify this experience. Um, and these core KPIs, this, this data, you just make sure you collect it the same from event to event and year to year. Uh, that way you can take your KPIs to the next level. Uh, this is when they get fun. Um, you can start to establish internal benchmarks, uh, which will really give you true insight into event health and performance. Um, and that opens the door for year over year trend analysis, too. Uh, so the key, I think, is establishing what your objectives and the most important things you want to measure are up front at a strategic level uh, so that you can deploy those things uh, across the board and collect data the same uh, at all the different points you collect it. That way it comes together, it integrates nicely, um, and you can get some really, really powerful insight from it. And, and you're just reiterating what we keep on uh, talking about in the event planning stage at all times. We all have to keep the purpose of the event and what we want to achieve uh, at front and center in order for us to even start planning because we can't just randomly uh, put on sessions if we don't know what we want to achieve with the session. So that is really drilling home that that objective the purpose of an event the intention that's the yep. key of it and that helps us interpret the data correct yep i think the, the intention is a big word that you, you hit on there um you have to be intentful um you know you have to understand you know what your audience you know what their expectations and objectives are um and with intent you can deliver on those uh, but without intelligent uh it, it's hard to have you know uh intent and I know there is a lot of um, practitioners uh, um, and approaching this from the scientific way, really, uh, to how you can measure those outcomes and the changes in behavior. And I know there are scientists uh, and everything. But from your practical experience, have clients been able to adapt their business models and, and how, based on the data collected? Um, are, are you speaking to say clients we've worked with or the industry? Correct. Should... Yes. Yeah. Uh, ab absolutely. I mean, I think due to the semi-confidential nature of the, the research we're reporting on, I can't necessarily delve into a specific uh, event, the insights, you know, gained and, and what was, was uh, 
uh, done based on that. However, I can tell you um, across the board, um, and especially in the report we did with you guys in 2021, uh, we've seen a big shift in attendee expectations and objectives. Um, and all of our clients have adjusted their business models uh, to incorporate this attendee feedback data and analysis into their strategic planning uh, to ultimately close the, the attendee feedback loop. Um, I think that's one of the most vital things we can do is show organizers to deliver a, a, continue, a continually evolving, sustainable, growing event, um, you know, is to close that, that attendee feedback loop. Uh, and one thing when you were just uh, talking about data collection and interpreting it, um, you were talking about repeat same pattern, same criteria, which really uh, allow you to adjust. Where do you start from when you're only starting to collect data from scratch, when you have no history to, to fall back on? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's another really good question. Um, I think when it comes to you know event data that can be used for strategic analysis, the the real low hanging fruit right now for organizers is registration data plus uh, satisfaction data or, or post event survey data. Uh, this is all really readily available. It's it's quite easy to collect, um, and based on the nature of you know the data you're working with, it's easily integrated. Um, and by bringing these things together, you can really understand who your audience is, um, what their objectives are, and how well you've hit on them, uh, yielding, you know, really, you know, amazing insight into the actual performance of your event. Um, but again, starting with, like, say, registration, um, you got to know who attends your event. And anyone going to an event knows you have to register, even if it's free. It might be online in advance. It might be live and in person when you show up. But either way, you have to do it. Um, and it's it's just an easy place to collect demographic data, uh, but it's also uh, a cool opportunity to, to ask a few strategic questions uh, to get a better understanding of your audience. You know, your first time attendee or how did you hear about us or what session topics or exhibitor categories are of most interest, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You don't want to bog down registration and make it long, but ask a couple smart questions. But then after the conclusion of your event, I, I think it's really vital to, to conduct a post-show survey. Um, and that's how you add your attendee satisfaction data into the mix. Um, so going back to the KPIs that I had mentioned earlier uh, that you've kind of established to, uh, to measure your event performance, uh, those are derivative of your registration and post-event survey data, or at least very, very often they are. Um, you know, i.e. how many people attended registration, how many exhibitors registration, how many marketing directors, that's all from your registration data. Uh, but if you're looking into what was your event NPS or your attendee loyalty or uh, your overall satisfaction, that's going to come from your survey data. Uh, those numbers are, are, are actually quite valuable by themselves, but, but they become quite powerful when you start to overlay, integrate and plot them together. Um, you know, when you can start to understand who are my sevens and my eights and my net promoter score, and how can I influence them to become a nine or a ten? Um, but I think, you know, with the event data in general, I, I've really gotten off on a tangent here. I apologize. I, I really get into this stuff. But I think the, the area to attack uh, as a lot of associations are undergoing a, a digital transformation, it's, it's double down on registration and post-event surveys. Uh, it's, it's probably going to be the best bang for your buck. And it, it could be yield some of the most value, too, uh, if you could bring those things together effectively. And you you actually preempted my question about any any tips and tricks to make data uh, collection more exciting. The way you got excited, I'm sure everybody is now uh, who's listening and watching going straight back and seeing how they can get uh, get those net promoter scores. Uh, uh, any other tips you want to share? To, uh, any of your passion and excitement about data collection? Well, absolutely. One, here's the, the number one tip. If it's in the budget, have The Rock be your keynote speaker. It's a guaranteed win. No, okay, come on. That, that's probably not going to hit with this crowd. It's all good. It's all good. But no, uh, uh, the big thing with your surveys to, to boost your response rates, we need to get those out as soon as the event ends. Um, we need to send out a reminder and probably start to close those down two weeks post event. Uh, once you get after two weeks, your data is just not going to be as relevant, uh, like relevant. You're going to have more outliers coming in. So again, it's it's good to have your program set up so that you can launch it, do your reminders, and really have it all done in about two weeks. 
Uh, keep your surveys pretty short after the event. Uh, registration as well. I, I really like to use platforms that, that feature skip logic, uh, conditional logic. You can ask different people different things, incorporate, you know, payment processing. Uh, worked at GTR, I think recently acquired by Personify uh, for, for years. Again, just a great, you know, reg product that allows you to collect data. Um, but yeah, another tip for, for this thing, it's, it's really just to focus on your objectives. This is really strategic. Uh, our research, all my conversations with everybody has shown me this, you know, a lot of these post event survey or registration efforts, they're, they're kind of a tactical exercise that's done to collect one or two statistics for a marketing document and then kind of into the bin. Um, so I think it's, it's, it's key to, to really start to identify your objectives so that your results on these things can become more strategic and really you know, guide the future of the event. And how do you feel and think about immediate um, feedback on after every single session? Do you think it's an overload? What are your personal thoughts? Um, I think that event organizers that, that offer like a continued education program or continued legal credits or professional develop units, you know, whatever it may be, I think they're inherently, uh, you know, in a more powerful place to collect better uh, satisfaction data. Um, that comes down to the number of sessions your audience make up. Do you want to do uh, a session for or a, a survey for every single session? Uh, maybe make those optional. Do you want to do maybe a general post event uh, survey? Uh, but I think that it, it does become quite vital uh, when you're doing things like that to, to do something on a session per session basis so that you can understand if you, you have good speakers, if these are speakers you want to bring back. Uh, but again, like everything in this event, there's so many variables at play. It's it's hard to to give a um, you know black and white answer. And and that is something you you guys advise as well as part of your service in uh, how to approach the data collection point uh, and, and what the frequency should be. And and um, is that Absolutely. part of your service? Absolutely. You know, it, we, we do offer a platform that, that, you know, kind of is the, the machine that, that generates and creates and sends the, the surveys out, uh, but it's attached to our, our research agency. Uh, so before your projects, you know, depending on what we're doing, you know, we have, you know, several consultation calls. Uh, we really like to understand your objectives uh, and work with you on an event by event basis. Perfect. And then for anybody who is interested in learning more about the Explory, please feel free to visit uh, explory.com. And I'm not going to let you go because we are on Hello America's What's Cooking. You will have to share with us any favorite foods, restaurants. You are in Charlotte. So any tips for us? Oh my gosh, I, I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. There's so many good restaurants here. I, I would be uh, remiss to not name one. I won't name the maybe the best, but I'll name my favorite that I go to all the time. Uh, Fuda Buddha Ramen. Uh, it's in South End. Uh, they do a lot of really cool stuff. Um, it's a great place. Um, but speaking to what's cooking in America, not a food thing. There's something kind of cool I'm doing this weekend. Is, is it okay if I share? Please. <laughs> Awesome. So I, uh, I, I hate to do like fundraising and awareness or things like of that nature. Uh, but uh, I'll be making a little post shortly on LinkedIn. I'm trying to, to raise some awareness for some really good people. Uh, my rugby team uh, together with the Charlotte Fire Department, we will be doing a 9-11 stair climb uh, this weekend on 9-11 at the Duke Energy Tower. I think it's like 125 uh, flights. We'll be racing up there. I believe the firefighters will have their full gear on, uh, but all the money raised will be uh, donated to the, the, I think it's the Firefighters Federation. Again, the, all the information will be in the link that I post. And just to make it super easy, uh, if you just click like, I'm going to donate a dollar on your behalf up to the first uh, 100 likes. Uh, we just want to hope we can, you know, influence the LinkedIn algorithm and get this in front of a lot of people and, and hopefully, uh, you know, get some extra awareness out there. Thank you so much for actually raising this and, and um, bringing this back to the human side of our industry. I really appreciate that. And please feel free to also post uh, the, the link to your LinkedIn post within uh, the recording for this uh, session today so people have direct access to it. Um, that was all for from us, from David and I today. Um, we are having another... 
uh, live chat next week um, here on LinkedIn Live um, on, at 2 p.m. Eastern. My guest will be Greg Talley from Talley Management Group. And if you want to join us uh, as a guest, please feel free to email me, xenia.p at acreworld.org. I hope uh, you all have a lovely day and please do uh, press like on David's post. Thank you so much, David. Bye, guys.